morning, boys and girls. As you can see, we are not meeting in person today, but because I wanted us to uh, make sure that we were able to get together, um, I'm recording uh, this message for you earlier um, in the week, and I'm going to release it for you on, on Shabbat so that you'll see this uploaded to YouTube. Um, so we, so let's get started with prayer before I get in and tell you what we're going to talk about. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for letting us come here today. I thank you for your love. I thank you, Father, for um, your wisdom that you give us in the word. And I thank you for leading and guiding us wherever we go. I ask that you host this time and that you will speak through me, Holy Spirit, we give you this time in this we invite you to speak and for you to just have your way and for you to lead and guide the discussion. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. So we have been in Joshua and we last week we finished with Joshua 11 and um, we were supposed to get to Joshua 12, but we didn't have a chance to really finish up. So I'm going to do a short little um, finishing up with Joshua 12. And then next week you, um, when we get back together, um, we will be talking about the land and how it was divided up. And so we're going to chunk a bunch of scriptures together for next week. So if you want to begin reading ahead, read next for next week before um, we meet together, read Joshua's 13 through 20. So this week, we're going to talk a little bit about Joshua chapter 12. And Joshua chapter 12 is divided into two portions. The first portion has to talk about the inheritance that um, Moses was able to um, bring into Israel that was east of the Jordan River. And it was the land that he was able to conquer. And it was the land that he brought in from King Shion of the Amorites and also from King of Og as well. And, um, and it talks about from, from chapters or verses one through six, it talks about the land that that Moses was able to conquer. And um, if you go back into the story of Moses bringing, I think it's in Numbers, um, but him, him going into those battles, you'll see that um, the Reubenites and the Gads um, wanted the land, wanted that land and half the tribe of Manasseh. So half of the tribe of Manasseh said, we want to settle here and we want it this to be our land of our inheritance. And so Moses agreed to give it to these, um, to Man the Reubenites, the Gads, Gadites, um, and the half tribe of Manasseh. Um, and so that um, is, I think that's right. Yeah, Gads, Reubenites, Gads and the half tribes of Manasseh decided to get that land that they were conquered. So the first part of chapter 12, um, verses one through six, talks about that land and the land that Moses allowed them to be for those tribes' inheritance. And um, then if you read from seven, verses seven all the way to the end of 24, it talks about all the land that Joshua conquered when they came um, beyond the Jordan River westward. And so it talks about all the tribes and all the land that he was able to conquer and bring into the territory or into their inheritance as well. And um, so Joshua winds up defeating a total of 31 kings. And um, we had talked last week, the reason why this happened was because these are very small little city areas, city states, I guess, that were built up with uh, gates, city gates, walls, and these are walled cities and they're very small um, towns. And you would, you, they're not like today's society where, where I live, we have a, a fairly large town, um, but we live outside a big, huge, um, you would say, call it a metropolitan area um, right below Charlotte. And so that's a huge city. So we're not conquering land. They're not living in lands like that because they didn't have ways to trans, they didn't have transportation. They didn't have ways to um, to really easily get to all of those lands without um, walking and um, or going by camel or, or horses and things like that. So it would really require um, people to stay closer together and local. And they had to work together, protect each other, protect themselves from, from people wanting to come in and take over their land. So they really 
fortified their little small cities and they built up their little towns like that. So Joshua was able to conquer the land um, on the other side of the Jordan River. And so I'm not going to read that with you. Um, I'm going to encourage you to go home and are at home when you have quiet time to read Joshua tw chapter 12. And um, in the email that I send out to those who sign up for the Bible study, you can um, you can kind of look at the map and you can kind of label the areas that it talks about that. And then next week when we get together, we're going to we're going to get into how Joshua divided the land and how it was divided up to all the all the tribes of Israel and how people began to settle there. And so that is Joshua 12. So you're just just a short little review. And so I wanted to ask how many of you know what holiday or what day is celebrated on Sunday this week? It is Mother's Day. So we are getting ready to enter into a season of Mother's Day. And I always try to take some time to make sure I teach on Mother's Day, Father's Day, certain things, certain events that have that come through because I think it's important. Um, it's important to honor our mother and our father, and it's important to honor other mothers or important people in our lives who have helped shape us to grow and to become the people that we have. Um, we have we have developed into being and we grow because we have people who influence us and a lot of times who we are we have people who can influence us to make to be good or sometimes we have people who influence us to to make bad decisions um and so when i think of mother's day i think of all the people who have spent time loving me all the women who have um who have shown me guidance and and I'm thinking of the older women, because when you have a mother, it's someone who has more experience than you most of the time. And um, they are supposed to be women who, uh, for mother, they would be women who lead and guide and nurture you and help you show you, teach you the right and wrong ways to do things. Um, unfortunately, we live in a broken world and not everybody is blessed to have a good mother. Not everybody, um, mom is still living. Some moms have passed away. Um, some people have been blessed to have moms that didn't give birth to them naturally, but they've adopted children. And then there are some people who wanted to have children and never were able to. So while this day for me is always a joyous occasion, there are many people who sometimes have a hard time with this day because they are reminded of the loss of their beloved mother or the loss of a child that they may have had that may have passed away before them or, or a longing for to have children and they weren't able to have, um, that they haven't been able to have children either naturally or they had to adopt and, or however it's worked out for them. And so Mother's Day, is happy for a lot of people, but it's hard for others. And I want you to think about that as you go about your day on Sunday. And I want you to think about the moms or the women in your life who may have contributed to you, but also who may be um, feeling a little down or sad. And what can you do to honor them? What can you do to show them that they matter and that they're important um, and that they are seen. So Mother's Day is a day to honor mothers, all mothers. Um, and it, I don't think it's something that we should take lightly. I think it's something that we should um, treasure. And if you are a person who has had a mom who maybe hasn't shown you all the kindness and love, that you would like. Maybe you think about the person who does, the mom, the person, the woman who has come into your life, who has mentored you and leaded you and guided you. So I just wanted to talk about those things. So before, so in order to do that, I want to talk about a few women in the Bible who have been mothers or who were special women 
Um, one of one of these is Rebecca. I wanted to talk about Re Rebecca and in Genesis 25, I'm flipping to it right now, um, verses 22, she is pregnant and she is has two children in her womb. And as she's pregnant, she just feels this constant struggle in her in her womb. And so she says here at Genesis 25, verses 22, it says. That's Exodus, not Genesis. Let me, sorry. So one more chapter back. So if you have to, your Bibles open it up here. All right, 25 through 22. And it says this. But um, as Rebecca was pregnant, it says, but the children struggled with one another inside of her. And she says, if it's like this, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of Adonai, and Adonai said to her, two nations are in your womb, and two people from your body will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other people, but the older will serve the younger. So a mother is someone who is willing to go to prayer for her children. Rebecca was not sure. She didn't have the answers of what was happening in her womb. And she went to the Lord for prayer and she sought him and he gave her answers. So moms are people who are willing to go to prayer for our children when we don't understand what they're doing or, or why they're doing certain things. We go to the Lord for prayer when mothers don't know how to direct their children, they should go to the Lord in prayer and they inquire of him of what would be the best approach and how to handle a situation. He will lead and guide them and show them how to help raise your children. So mothers are willing to seek the Lord's guidance. So we also hear in Jeremiah, it says start in Jeremiah 33 verses three, and it says this, um, call to me and I will answer. But let me just flip to Jeremiah 33. And I will read it to you. Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things which you do not know. And that's what Re Rebecca did. She called to the Lord and she did not know what to do. So another mom that we're going to talk about is Hannah. And we see Hannah in Samuel. Um, in 1 Samuel, she talked to Sa Han Hannah desired to have a child and she longed for a child. And so she went to the Lord to, um, to, she went to the synagogue to pray. And when um, the priest saw her there, he said, why? He thought she was um, actually um, praying or he didn't think she was praying. He thought she was drunk because she was um, praying so intently. And so, but Hannah was a woman who sought the Lord with all of her heart and all of her soul over a longing and a desire to have children. And the father heard her and he blessed her with um, that. Let me flip to Samuel for some reason. It is not easy to find today. Let's see the prophets. Um, I'm using the Tree of Life Bible, and it's not organized as regular Bibles are. I feel like I've passed it. Sorry, give me one second. I did not open. I did not open up. Here we go. Yes, I went right past it. So we are at 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 21. And it says here. So Adonai visited Hannah and she conceived and gave birth. Not only to, um, so she conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the child Samuel grew before Adonai. So a mom 
Hannah prayed and asked for a child and she was given Samuel. But not only did he give her Samuel, but he gave her more children. He blessed her womb with more. And she was willing to dedicate her children to the Lord and to the Lord's service. And I think that that is something that moms who want to lead their children in, in, in the ways of um, learning about Yahweh, it, that's a really good and amazing, wonderful thing that she could do. So um, she also prayed. She prayed and prayed and prayed for Samuel and God heard her. So that goes to Matthew chapter seven, verses seven. And it says this in Matthew seven, seven, it says seven and eight. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Speak and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and, and one who seeks finds and the one who knocks, it shall be opened. So Hannah was answered, her answer was yes. And God gave her um, a child and he gave her not just one, he gave her many children. And that was amazing. So Hannah is um, a woman who was able to seek after Yahweh and, and to be able to raise her children to know him. So then we also have um, Anna. She was a woman who prayed without stopping. She prayed and prayed and prayed to see Yeshua. And she did not give up. She wanted to not die. She was a widow woman. And she did not want to pass away before um, she saw the Lord's face, um, Yeshua's face. So we're going to look at Luke. And we're going to look at Luke chapter 2, verses 36 First Thessalonians, I didn't write down the right scripture, so um, we will just go back to that one. Um, I thought I did. I wrote down Mary, when Mary received um, a mom in Luke, Luke 2, 36 to 38, verse relating to Yeshua's mother, Mary. And it says here, 36 through 38, um, actually, here we go. I did, it was Anna. Sorry. It says, now Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher, was a prophetess. She was well advanced in age, having lived with her husband only seven years, and as a widow until the age of 84. She never left the temple, serving day and night, fasting and praying. And coming up at that very instant, she began praising God and speaking about the child to all those who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Because what had happened is Mary and Joseph had brought the baby Jesus, Yeshua, to the temple to dedicate him. And so Anna had been praying and asking day and night that she would be able to see Yeshua, the child, who all those were waiting for. And so she prayed and prayed and prayed without ceasing. And she prayed even when it seemed impossible. And you think about that. It says Anna was only married for seven years. And then her, and then lived as a widow until the age of 84. That was a really long time, a really long time that she lived. And it said that she never left the temple and she stayed there praying and fasting day and night. And that she spent time praying. And I would think that, that over 60 years of praying potentially, or 50 years of praying, if she was 20 and was 27 when when her husband passed or 30 when her husband passed and she went from from 30 age 30 to 84 that's 54 at least 54 years if not more and she spent that long praying she might have felt like giving up but see the thing about moms and spiritual moms they will continue to pray and they will not give up so 
even when things seem impossible, a mom is willing to pray and to keep praying. So spiritual moms and moms are people who love their children or love the, their spiritual children and they're willing to pour into them and lead and guide them. And um, then you look at 2 Timothy, where it talks about Timothy is talking about, Paul's talking to Timothy about um, his, his, his grandmother and his mother, Lois and Eunice, who were amazing faith-filled women who were able to teach Timothy um, faith and how to walk with strong faith. And um, they had to have some strong faith and the ability to pour, to pour into their son, grandson, Timothy, for him to be able to continue it. So Mother's Day is a time where we should look at who in our life, who in our life are those people who are willing to teach us the ways we should go? Who are those who are willing to lead and guide us into doing the right things and to help us turn toward Yahweh, turn toward the word and to um, make decisions that will help benefit not only us, but also God's community. Moms are also those people who not only spend time praying and leading and guiding and showing, lead, leading by faith, um, they are people who are willing to comfort you when, um, and they show you what it's like to be comforted by God because moms can comfort us, but Yahweh comforts us even better. So this Mother's Day, I want you to think, I want you to look at all moms and I want you to look and see how they are showing reflecting God's image into their children or, or to those that they're mentoring. I have many, many moms in the spirit realm. I have many people who are willing to guide me, help me, show me how to become a woman, how to become a mom, how to um, guide my children and how to, when you mess up, when you fail, how to get up and to keep going. And so Mother's Day is about a time of reflecting on who in your life has God given you to raise and to mentor, but also who in your life has been mentoring you. And if you don't have someone in your life who is a spiritual mother or your mother's not alive today, who in your life has God allowed to come into that place? And, you know, Yeshua, when he went to the cross, he looked at his disciple and he said, this is my mom, like, take care of her. This is my mom. And on the cross, he was even providing and thinking about his mom. If Yeshua is willing to go to the cross and at the point of death, making sure his mom is cared for, we should make sure that we are caring for our moms as well, or that we are honoring those who have poured into us. You know, um, I have taught public school, children's church, I've taught for a long time, and I have come across children whose moms are not in the picture. Either they've passed away tragically, or something's happened, or... Um, their mom is just not in a place where they can be there for them. And those children, I can think of one particular young boy and him and his brother, they were able to be raised by their grandmother. And um, when I've reached, when he's, when I came across him just recently, I taught him my first year of teaching over 20 years ago. So he's a grown man and his grandmother has passed away. So Mother's Day is a sad day for him, but he has been blessed because even though he didn't have his biological mom with him when he was a young boy, he did have a grandmother who loved him and poured it to him. And there's, a, I have another young man, that uh, young family who comes to our church now and their mom has passed away and 
and their grandmother has stepped in and has become mom to them. And then you have other people who have stepped in to foster children who have who are willing to open their homes and love these children, even though they didn't give birth to them. And you have moms who adopted children who are willing to lead and guide them. And then you have people who have moms that aren't very kind. And then you have friends, moms who are willing to love and um, love and mentor and guide your children um, as a child. So as a young person, and I keep saying this, look at who is in your life and who you can say, thank you for loving me and thank you for being my mom. Thank you for being my spiritual mom. And if you don't have that person in your life, I would pray and ask Yahweh to help you to see who is in your life that can be, it could be an aunt, it could be an uncle or an aunt, it might, you might have an uncle, you know, you might have a, a, a parent, a, a father who has to be a mom and a father to you. And he's doing that all. And so sometimes you have to look to see who is that person who is giving you that comfort and praying for you and leading you and showing you that way. So that being said, I hope that today's little message will be a blessing to you and that you will honor your moms this weekend and um, you will spend some time in the word reading Joshua. So um, let's end with prayer. Father, I thank you so much for just letting us come here on this Zoom, and I pray that you will be with us wherever we go, and that you will um, just direct our paths. And I thank you for letting us come back together so that we continue our study in Joshua. In Yeshua, Messiah's name, we pray. Amen.